on the move today, getting your blood pumping with positive stories from coast to coast. And along Florida's coast, this family is running to clean up their city, the whole city. This is Charlie, she's almost two. And this is Henry, he's four. And this is Andy Thompson. This year, he plans to run all 475 miles of Boca Raton, picking up litter along the way. If I do it three times a week, three miles a day, 50 weeks a year, I can actually get all of that done. Charlie and Henry are the spotters, and they've helped Dad find a lot of garbage. The least I've done is four pounds so far. The most I did was 14. Andy also uses these runs to address problems in the city. Broken sidewalks, pedestrian issues, you know, traffic lights that take a little too long. Snapping pics and taking them to City Hall, where he serves on council. Talk about running for office. Are you ready to be moved by more positive people? Well, this is good to know, and I'm your host, Lindsay Boach. We are in a time of healing uh, across the nation, across the country. So, you know, I just encourage people with anything that I do to do the best that you can and to be kind to one another. Just a perfect stranger, like, he just out of nowhere said, I want to raise awareness for you and do this for you. I don't want nothing. Well, we should help people until they don't need help anymore. We have learned that once you get over that bridge of teaching someone what to do, that they're all in. The way that I seen myself was like this. And the way that I see myself now is like, I'm a grand um, queen beast in these streets and nothing can stop me, not even myself. Not just for your physical body, but for your spiritual body. But to just put your stuff aside and continue to serve, I find it really, really heartening. It's very inspiring. <laughs> Our storytellers have found inspiring athletes all across the country, and this high school football team in Colorado is scoring big with us. Yeah, I still consider it my baby. <laughs> Brad Caldwell, quite literally, built Branson football. The urging of three young men, they said it would sure be nice if we could play football. <laughs> And the boys picked up, uh, oh, load after load of rocks, and we dug up cactus and thistles, and it was all hand that we even tilled it with a little garden tiller. In 2014, Caldwell and a few students put in over 100 hours of manual labor to construct the Branson High School football field. I got used to it. It toughened me up mentally and physically, and I thought that was a great advantage. It wasn't much of a looker, but it was theirs. Until the springs around Branson dried up, and they were no longer allowed to water the field. Yeah, it broke my heart. It really did. You know, I, I thought to myself, I didn't mention to anyone but you, but you know, I thought to myself, toughen up, guys. Come on. So you're playing on a pasture. You know, you can do this. Opposing program said they'd no longer travel to Branson. They didn't want to play on Mr. Caldwell's baby. We all live in kind of the same environment, so all of our fields are not up to date and like very good to play on. And it very it feels very weird getting singled out. It kind of ticked me off. There's a little bit of like the chip on the shoulder thing where we have to deal with that field the whole time and if you're not tough enough to come out and play the way we play then you don't deserve to play us at all. I was a little offended, a little mad, a little angry, um, but decided to let it go and say hey this is an opportunity for us to to really make something happen. Forged in the mud and muck, the Bearcats summoned their resolve, seeking a solution rather than wallow in adversity. This is the Branson Bearcats football team. They are in desperate need of a new football field. They started a fundraiser, a new age version of Mr. Caldwell's 100 hours of labor to build a turf field. Our story is, is one of such uh, perseverance in overcoming the tough times that we're in. And this is kind of a thing where the community is really bouncing back. And yeah, the feel of community is something that people can really gather around and support. 
They raised $70,000 in a couple weeks. It's gonna happen. Buoyed by belief and hope. If you tell a great story, a true story, an authentic one, people are gonna res resonate with that and, and open up their, their hearts to you. They're now reaching out to the Colorado community at large, hoping to make every inch count. It would honestly be crazy because, you know, small school, small 1A school, but to just know that we got our story out there to all these people, if, if we could make this happen and if they could raise enough money to help us build a turf field, that would just be an insane feeling. Go to the website, make a pledge, make a difference. more that's good to know. There's a whole lot of rolling going on here at the Hermitage Strikes and Spares. All right, Lord, good luck and good bowling. Today is Seniors Wednesday League Day. Being around these folks makes me want to bowl another 20 years. <laughs> oh, a good one, a good one. Well, something I can do. And we've got our eye on the Golden Eagles team. You just say eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Well, who wants to go first? It doesn't matter. From the youngest. I'll be 69 next month. She's still 28 years younger than the team's senior member. I don't do much practicing because my arm gets too tired. 96-year-old Robert Ziegler. So I'll wait till the game comes up and then I'll bowl. That's right. He don't need to practice. He's 96 years young and he's been with the Golden Eagles for about seven years now. I know a heavier ball would have more momentum at the same speed. And I could get more speed sometimes, but there's no use to get a lot of speed if you can't hit anything. Ziegler's esteemed history. I retired professor of chemistry at Lincoln Memorial University in Harrogate. I did that for 36 years, and I've been retired now 27. Yay! I'm not that good. My average is not very good. 93. You know, it's just all up here. But he's got the admiration of all of his team members. It's very inspiring. <laughs> I just hope I'm in as good condition at 96 as what he is. He's great. I know a lot of people, like even my own age, they just sit on the couch and watch TV. He don't sit. That's a curve. Not too good. We just all clap and enjoy it when Robert has a good day. Today, I don't care. Oh. He's having an exceptional day. Oh! I was afraid it was going to miss. You know, we had to ask the secret to staying so active and involved. I'll tell you one thing, and this is something I've read about uh, any kind of thing you've got, is exercise, exercise, exercise. See somebody at that age bowling. It's really neat. Since I can do it, I'm going to try to do it until I'm 100 if I can. <laughs> That's a good one to film. <laughs> So much more that's good to know today. Our journey continues with a generous stranger. Just a perfect stranger, like he just out of nowhere said, I wanna raise awareness for you and do this for you. I don't want nothing. He's walking to make a difference and his story is definitely good to know.